Okay, now that we have our uh, our enemy blueprint, we are ready to start spawning it. So we'll use the game mode for that, which is um, uh, you can use it as sort of a game manager or uh, something that oversees uh, what's happening in the the greater scope of things. So in order to spawn things into the scene, we'll use um, the game mode to um, to handle that. There's a few things we're going to need to give it to handle this. Um, we're going to have to give it um, a U property and we'll only be able to uh, edit the defaults and we'll set the category to enemy class oops cals class and then we'll go down here and we'll call it or we'll make a T subclass of a enemy and we'll call it enemy class. So basically what this does is we'll be able to pass it in either anything that derives from a enemy, so it could be a blueprint or it could be a class itself, um, and we, we'll be able to select it from a drop-down in our blueprint defaults. So we will um, also give it a begin play. Uh, we give it begin play because when we when we need to call the world timer manager, the world doesn't exist until we actually uh, are in the scene. So it will crash if we don't do that. And then under protected, we'll give it void spawn enemy. And that will just be our logic for spawning the enemy. So what we want to do now is we want to go into our CPP implementation and we want to use our constructor helpers again to spawn um, our blueprint of our enemy. So make, a, make one out of a U blueprint and we'll call it enemy blueprint and we'll call it or I will set it to um, find a blueprint and we want it to find it at slash game slash project assets slash bp underscore enemy propane dot bp enemy propane and then same thing as before if enemy blueprint dot object if we actually pulled something in Let's set the enemy class to uh, enemy blueprint dot object, and we want to get the generated class from that. Since that's going to give us um, a different type, we want to cast that to a U class because that's what the enemy class is expecting. The reason we use uh, generated class is because the blueprints generate their own classes. Um, and they're compiled into C++ and uh, we're just getting that information, casting it to a U class and then storing it in our enemy class to use later. So now we want to go into our begin play function. We want to create it and go into it. We're just going to add one line here. This is how easy it is to add a quick and dirty um, uh, interval for doing various things. You can set this to do anything. You can do it to update a score. Um, anything that you can put in a function you can call once or at an interval in a loop. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to get world timer manager and we're going to set timer we're going to set it to we're the owner of this timer. We want it to run uh, our function called uh, spawn enemy. We want it to run every three f three seconds, and true or false based on whether you want it to run in a loop or not. Do you want this to run once in three seconds, or do you want it to run every single three seconds, three second interval? Sorry. So now we can go in and we can create our implementation for spawn enemy code which is simply um, 
setting a position based on uh, random numbers and then spawning the enemy. So in order to spawn an actor uh, via code we need uh, the world. So we'll create a, a pointer to the world and we'll get it via get world. And then we'll check to see if that actually worked. Most of the time it does but you never know. And then we want float x position equals f math oops um, random range f random range sorry f rand range and then we'll do from minus a thousand to a thousand we'll do y position is f math f rand range minus a thousand and a thousand and then we'll do the z position and we'll just raise it up by a hundred So now that we have its position uh, worked out, we'll just want to give it an f vector, and we'll make that constant because we don't want to change that at the moment. And we'll call it uh, spawn position, and then we'll create it via x position, y position, and z position. We're gonna make some. Now we need to make some uh, actor spawn parameters, and we'll call it. Sp spawn parms because I'm lazy and don't like typing that extra A. And we'll set it spawn palms dot owner equals this. So it's us, the game mode. And the instigator we'll just set it to our instigator. Now we can do the lovely magic of spawning our uh, our enemy. So we'll just store it in a, cl in a class just in case we want to use it for anything. So a enemy pointer const spawned enemy equals world spawn actor. We want to use the templated version of this so that we can tell it we want you to return a enemy of type a enemy, and then we'll give it the enemy class because it needs to know where. How, what am I creating this from? We'll give it spawn position. Where am, where am I spawning this? We'll use f rotators zero rotator to say we don't want to mess with the rotation as we spawn it, and then we'll just send it spawn parms. And via this, we should now be spawning um, one of our blueprints every three seconds. So let's give that a shot and see what we get. Oops, I I messed up on something. What did I screw? I must be Oh, you know why? It's because I never told it that this class exists. So let's go in here and we'll just include our enemy.h and this should work itself out now. Okay. Now that uh, that issue is out of the way, we'll open up the project and we should hit play and have one of these blueprints spawn uh, at a random location between minus thousand and a thousand every three seconds. Oh, there's one. There's two. So now we have random spawning of our enemies. They're a little bit too high, but uh, we can fix that. And they also spawn into each other. But for all intents and purposes, this is 
the beginning of our game, I guess you can call it. Um, so that's it for this portion of the tutorial. In the next one, we're going to fire out a, um, a trace or a ray, and we're going to see if that intersects with any of these guys here. And then if it does, we're going to destroy it and spawn a explosion in its place. So I'll see you then.